call upon the next speaker, Dr. Sangeeta Mukhopadhyay, who comes from CDFD, where she's the head of the molecular biology group in the laboratory of molecular and cellular biology. Her current research is in understanding immune responses to the mycobacterium parasite. And uh, you'll hear more during her talk. Sangeeta did actually her PhD from the Regional Medical Research Center at Bhuneshwar and a postdoc at NII in New Delhi, where she worked on problems related to the field of immunology. And uh, before joining CDFT, she did have a brief stint at the CDRA Lucknow. Sangeeta is a recipient of several awards, some of them being the Young Scientist Award by the Department of Science and Technology, the Third World Women Scientist Grant awarded by TWS Italy, the National Young Woman Bioscientist Award. She's a fellow of some of the national academies in India. I call upon Sangeeta to deliver her talk. She will be speaking to us on mycobacterium tuberculosis, immune mechanisms and therapy. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I am really thankful to the, uh, uh, this uh, NACI and ASTC organizers to call me here and give me the opportunity uh, to honor me as well as give me the opportunity to, uh, to, to share our work. And uh, I'm really very happy and proud to be here today. So I'll give some glimpse of the immune responses, what happened uh, when there is an infection and how, what is TB and how our work little bit, how we are moving towards the direction of uh, therapies, uh, designing therapeutics against TB. So this is what, uh, uh, you know, when there is an infection, we have an immediate response, which is called an innate response, which is very early, but it is short. So you feel there is a fever, there is an inflammation, redness. So these are all due to the innate response happened. It, it, it is very non-specific kind. So there is no uh, specific motif which is responsible. So they, they, they only detect the conserved motif and then respond. So th thus they don't have a very uh, memory or remembrance power. But th then later on about three to four days, uh, you understand that after uh, a fever, uh, three, four days, we sta start feeling better. That is due to the acute immunity comes into the uh, picture. And that is, uh, that's why it is late, but it is long. Uh, and it has a memory response. So uh, I just highlighted the innate players which plays a role which is the granulocyte, macrophage, dendritic cell, neutrophil, eosinophil and basophil. These are blue highlighted and the orange highlighted are the players for the adaptive immunity which is mainly by T cell and B cell. So the when T cells are functional immediately trying to kill the pathogen they are affected T cell or B cell. B cell makes antibody and T cell has a direct kind of functions and these T cells and B cells also had a part which is called the memory T cells who, who they sit and they uh, wait for the second stage of infection and that time they had a very huge immune responses and that's the idea of vaccine you know we we train the immune system that this kind of pathogen may attack and then when there is a real an attack then there is a very high immune response which is called an amnestic response. Now the T cells are there are a lot of different T cells but main are the regulatory T cells which regulate the CD4 and CD8 T cells. These are the two important cells which play very important role to take care of the uh, to protective responses. The CD8 T cells are also known as killer T cells which directly kill the infected cell and CD4 T cell have the helper response which kind of uh, Th2 and Th1. So these are the protective kind and help all of these cells and Th2 mainly helps the B cell. Now, in a brief, I will uh, just tell you that when there is a pathogen, the macrophage or the dendritic cell, they take the pathogen, they try to kill it in the lysosome. The lysosome has a degrading enzyme, they try to degrade the pathogens into small uh, and 
try to kill in that during that conditions the macrophage or dendritic cells also make lot of free radicals and the cytokines and these cytokines actually regulate the t cells to be th1 or th2 i'll come to that so when they degrade the pathogens into small molecules these molecules are then presented by msc class 1 or msc class 2 so if it is intracellular uh, proteins they, they 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 are presented in the context of class 1 which the uh, CDA T cells looks and they try to kill this infected cell. But if it is presented in the context of MSC class 2, then helper T cell comes and these T cells, depending on the macrophage that time, what kind of cytokine secretes, if it is interleukin 12, then these T cells become differentiated into Th1, which has a helper function to all natural killer cells, CDA T cells, macrophages. But if this macrophage makes a lot of IL-10, then they become uh, Th2 and they help only the B cells. Now with this uh, background of immunology, I'll come to TB and you know TB is a respiratory, uh, it mainly infects the lung and also there are, uh, it is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis which has been isolated by Robert Koch and then uh, there is M. bovis which is mycobacterium bovis, they infect mainly cow and sometimes the human and M. lepri causes leprosy, kansasi and avium, they are actually non-tuberculous class mycobacteria but they cause respiratory and gastrointestinal symptom in AIDS patient who are immunosuppressed. So uh, this is a uh, little detail about TB that this is the increased risk factors are poverty, crowding, then malnutrition, chronic lung disease, chronic renal failure, a disease of elderly because they are immunosuppressed. Also people with AIDS, diabetes that also uh, they causes immunosuppression, alcoholism which also affects our body as well as as I told you this um, some uh, this immunosuppression which uh, they, the, that causes TB uh, to infect uh, the human being. TB is a very long uh, 7000 to 9000 BC it has been detected so uh, it is continuously adapting with the human population. And if you look at the WHO data that 1.5 million people die from TB each year, making it a top successful pathogen. So it takes a life in every 20 seconds, although we don't uh, recognize, but actually it's very dangerous. About every 20 seconds, one person is dying in TB and one third of world population is latently infected. India alone accounts about 25% of total clinical cases and India ranks third most TB burden country. So we have to really, especially uh, Africa and China along with that India has to take care of TB uh, because uh, TB not only damage the lung system but also it causes the other, uh, there are other non-communicable disease which are associated with TB which is diabetes, then chronic lung disease, then chronic bronchitis, chronic kidney disease and renal failure, autoimmune and systematic disorder, cardiovascular disease, liver failure, many people suffer from liver problem after TB, then vitamin D deficiency and also now there are a lot of cancer coming up out of t after TB. So the, the, this happened due to the immune reactions happen from the body or the way the bacteria manipulate the immune system that causes, I'll just give one example of cancer that uh, uh, there are lot of uh, free radicals generated, then there are cytokines which are manipulated, DNA damage, release of C-reactive protein, then overexpression of COX-2 which is very important and the, the different uh, immune inhibitory receptors, these all can cause the lung cancer, the liver cancer, the gastrointestinal cancer and different other cancers can happen, bone cancer due to a TB. Now TB can be detected by the sputum, you can detect the bacteria, presence of bacteria in the sputum by microscopy by staining it or also the sputum can be cultured and look for the bacterial growth. The chest ray x-ray radiography happens uh, that is well known to us that that is one way to detect TB but that is mainly pulmonary TB. Then RT-PCR is mainly uh, also been done and the Mantu test or tuberculin skin test. And uh, the people are mainly also a lot of people are infected with latent TB who does not have an active infection but can still have the bacteria 
which is been uh, uh, can be detected with IGRA test although uh, uh, this is some specific antigen which is mainly present in mycobacterium tuberculosis which is ESAT 6 and this test is done uh, for uh, to detect the latent TB. Uh, which uh, uh, say that that is the TB is there, but it is not active infection. So, when there is an ex exposure, then 70 percent of us due to good immune system, they do not have the infection, but 30 percent have the infection out of that 5 percent can have acute disease, acute symptom and 95 percent can have latent disease. And this latent means the mycobacteria will sit in a, as a dormant phase inside the lung granuloma and then uh, you, when there is an immunosuppression then only 5 to 10 percent has an e e reactivation otherwise they can stay throughout the uh, human lifetime as a latent TB. So if there is a very strong immune system or response. So, this TB uh, can be uh, mostly it is pulmonary TB about 85 percent, but there are extra pulmonary TB that is it is other than lung it infects the lymph node, the genitourinary tract, the uh, bones and joints, meninges and intestine and skin. So, these are different play, uh, areas where uh, you can have the TB which is therefore known as extra pulmonary other than lung. And most of it are getting detected by our, uh, that PCR based detection. Now, uh, TB is a, uh, the bacteria is a rod shaped uh, 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 micro, uh, micron diameter and 2 to 4 micron in length. Now, the most important is that TB, this bacteria has a very thick cell wall which is a mainly compo composed of mycolic acid and they are aerobic and non motile and it multiplies very slowly. The most important point for TB is that it is very thick cell wall. So, that resist it to get degraded or attacked by the immune system like cytokines and free radicals and lysozyme, those proteolytic enzymes. So, it is very difficult to, to cross this very thick cell wall and that is one of the virulent property of the bacteria as well as the TB they are very slow growing. So, therefore, the antibiotics you have to take for long days about 6 to 9 months. Uh, because they multiply very slowly. So, this is how the TB can be transmitted an infected person can uh, uh, face to face if it is then the infected person can uh, when coughing they, they, they put the bacteria in aerosol and that will be inhaled by a uh, the fresh uh, uh, person which will then get the bacteria inside its lung and develop the disease if his immune system is poor. Now, this is what I was telling that TB is when they are taken by uh, from the, it goes to the lung epithelial cell where they multiply and then they attack the macrophages and then they try to make a tumor kind environment where it is uh, surrounded by different immune cells and the collagen. Now, this is a solid tumor kind where the bacteria are inside the cell. They what they do immediately they make the macrophage, a special macrophage called foamy macrophage where this lot of lipid bodies gets accumulated. So, these lipid bodies are required for the bacteria for they are uh, making a lipid cell wall as well as for their nutrition because the blood supply will not be there. So, the glucose will not be there. So, they then they use from glucose they shift to lipid as a uh, nutrition source or carbon source. Now, what happened that there is a tug of war uh, uh, like between host and uh, TB bacteria. Like people feel that the bacteria actually this is the strategy of the host to keep the TB inside a, a, a content. Uh, containment like they, they keep the TB inside something very solid tumor so that they devoid they do not allow uh, blood to get supplied and they, this is an aerobic bacteria so they, they try to um, bacteria to die and they constantly secrete lot of uh, cytokines uh, free radicals inside the tumor and try to either contain the bacteria inside the uh, granuloma and they stay as a latent TB throughout the life and they do not get advantage to multiply and come out 
but bacteria also are sitting dormantly and trying to see when there is an immunosuppressed conditions the moment they they also try to manipulate these macrophages these cells and when they feel that the the body is immunosuppressed then they secrete specific proteins which will try to 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 rupture this collagen and then they come and make the uh, they circulate in the blood and then there is an active infection so this is how still there is a debate whether the granuloma is in favor of the bacteria or is in favor of the uh, uh, host but people feel that it is probably important for the host to keep the bacteria in a latent conditions and if you have a very strong immune response then the bacteria cannot come there will be no active infection so this is a uh, hygiene conditions what we should follow like uh, using mask don't cough uh, in the public place immunization and healthy lifestyle environment no alcohol no uh, smoking and eat vegetables and keep your immune system very strong to, to kill the bacteria that is how in india especially we are all exposed we travel publicly so uh, public bus and as every that is and as i told you that india almost all of us we are probably exposed and uh, so only a good immune system can protect us from getting the disease so uh, that although we have taken bcg but vax as a vaccine but it is only important for t child tb but it is not effective for adult tb so there is an important of using drug which are isoniazid rifampicin ethambutol and pyrazinamide but these drugs are needed to take for 6 to 9 months it's a long duration and this is what the problem comes when there is a because these drugs are uh, taken for a longer time and there is a uh, symptoms or side effects happen this uh, during this drug uh, taking and that causes generation of mdr because people feel after one month of the drug they feel that they are okay they start uh, not taking the drugs and that causes although 90 percent may the bacteria may be killed with one month of drug treatment but 10 percent will be there who then start mutating and trying to get the drug resistant tb which is very dangerous and india is coming up about four percent is drug resistant and you understand one person can infect 10 to 15 people so then peop, uh, there will be a lot of drug resistant bacteria which are very difficult to treat treat yeah, so they can be multi-drug resistant still can be treated but extensively drug resistant tb is very difficult to treat so this is how we should be very careful and uh, we should uh, make other people aware of this fact that in case of tb people should be very strong to take six to nine months course to kill the bacteria completely rather than allowing the bacteria to become a drug resistant so therefore uh, uh, now we have to identify because already drug resistant varieties are there we have to identify antibiotics or most nowadays the important thing is coming as anti-infective so antibiotics are killing bacteria inside the test tube uh, but because of the property of the drug resistant uh, the the uh, uh, prop, drug resistant property anti infective drugs are more important which are not killing the bacteria inside the test tube but can kill the bacteria inside the host that means they are targeted against the host they don't allow the bacteria uh, to interact with specific host to manipulate the immune responses so therefore e e the anti nowadays this is also called as an host directed immune therapy which is coming into the more uh, attention is given to host directed immune uh, immune therapy uh, which can be used as an adjunct therapy to regularly use drug so i will tell why why uh, to uh, to know host directed immune therapy you should know or we should know the the immune responses how they are modulated or manipulated by the bacteria so as i told you the mtb when it is infected uh, engulfed by the macrophage macrophage try to kill it by uh, this phagosome gets fused with lysosome makes phagolysosome and there is an acidic pH then the proteolytic enzymes are activated and kill the bacteria but uh, the, the, the bacteria they inhibit phagosome acidification so the pH is not 4.5 but high 
so the the enzymes will not be active to kill the bacteria also they are uh, inhibit this phagosome to fuse with the lysosome okay so they are stay safely in phagosome where there is no lysosomal enzymes coming and uh, uh, lysosome is not fused and no lysosomal enzymes are coming so we also uh, worked in this direction we found one of the uh, protein called pkng they is they are in they, uh, that protein is involved in inhibition of phagosome lysosome fusion they target one of the protein called rap 7 l1 which gets recruited on the phagosome membrane and allow phagosome lysosome fusion so the bacteria prevents that by targeting rap 7 l1 also there is a reactive oxygen species and free radicals generated and some proteins are found to inhibit free radicals one of these is pp2 which acts as a transcription factor and they just go inside the nucleus and bind to the dna and uh, f uh, inhibit the free radical, uh, inhibit the gene transcription which are responsible for production of free radical. This is very important that they try to manipulate the cytokine response pro-inflammatory to anti-inflammatory. As I told you, pro-inflammatory which are mainly done by L12 chain of alpha, they are protective and uh, 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 an anti-inflammatory is non-protective. So, they try to give a pro-inflammatory uh, inhibit pro-inflammatory, give anti-inflammatory. They also inhibit antigen presentation to 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 rescue the CD4 T cell function. So this is what I was tell. Uh, this is very important that a macrophage gives antigen presentation to make the T cell functional. Also, uh, the cosmetic signaling to activate T cells, as well as the cytokines they make, which is IL-12 which gives a th1 and pro inflammatory cytokine response this is actually protective to tb but if it is il10 this is anti inflammatory this is non protective to tb and most of the virulent bacteria they skew the response from the pro inflammatory protective to anti inflammatory which is non protective so but it is not known why and how this mtb which protein is responsible for this cytokine shift so, we uh, also the TB active patient the, with active TB also had shown TH2 bias. So, based on this we started working on it and we thought that PPP family protein may be involved in skewing this response because this PPP family protein is increased in the virulent bacteria compared to the non-virulent. Non-virulent 4 PPP protein becomes 400. So, we thought that let us target the PPP family protein and based on different experiments we shortlisted one protein which is PP18 which is overexpressed in uh, mycobacteria compared to BCG and during infection, macrophage infection this is overexpressed. In uh, pathogenic bacteria also this is overexpressed and different uh, uh, computational studies and uh, expression profile we shortlisted PP18. So, what we found is that we did a series of experiment for last 10 years and we could find that PP2 is actually doing. Uh, this uh, they are skewing they are giving more IL-10 giving a non-protective response compared to they simultaneously inhibit the protective response which is IL-12. So, they give a very skewed TH2 response or a non-protective response. Not only that it has a pleiotropic function it also inhibit class 2 antigen presentation as well as it inhibits the lysosomal pH therefore the MTB is not able to degrade the uh, uh, sorry the macrophage is not able to degrade the MTB. So, based on this what we thought is that um, how, PP, how PP18 managed to do this we found that PP18 bind to a, a specific domain of a receptor which is called tall receptor and this domain it is not other domain it is only this 11 to 15 this particular domain is responsible if PP18 binds to this domain there will be lot of uh, IL-10 production as well as reduction of CD4 function and lysosomal pH. So, this actually is mainly responsible for the activity of PP18. To understand that really PP18 plays an important role we did an animal study where we deleted PP18 in M from MTB. So, this is a wild type bacteria with PP18, but if you delete PP18 then the bacteria is not able to survive. That means, PP18 helps the bacteria to survive. So, therefore, we feel that instead of targeting PP18, if we target 
this uh, site like uh, 11 to 15 domain if it is blocked by some molecules then PP18 will not be able to bind and therefore then uh, the mycobacteria cannot have this manipulation of the protective responses. So based on that we what we did is that we did an high throughput screening of the market available drugs which is about 3000 drug which are used for different purpose some are for anti malaria some are for painkiller because these are already available drugs so we screen whether any of this drug can bind to this part and then don't allow pp18 to interact and exactly we were lucky to molecules which are fda approved which are available in the market See if it this is uh, if PP18 binds to TLR2 all these drugs it binds this TLR2 and do, don't allow PP18 to successfully bind to the receptor. So that actually causes in uh, that upregulation of IL-10 then they upregulate uh, uh, sorry that inhibits the IL-10 which was upregulated by PP18. So PP18 is not able to bind. So that will be less IL-10, more pro-inflammatory cytokines and IL-12. Then it upregulates antigen presentation and also it is decreased lysosomal pH to kill the bacilli very effectively. So this all uh, we finally tested that if, if all these protective responses are now rescued by these three drugs, whether they are actually uh, uh, don't allow the bacteria to stay inside the macrophage very successfully and if this is the wild type bacteria you see that all these three drugs actually inhibiting the bacterial growth or multiplication inside the cell. So this is uh, we are uh, uh, really excited to see this is all, although an in vitro studies now we are planning or started doing this experiment in in vivo in animal model which is a bulky mice so whether because all these drugs are market available and given orally so we are now doing a collaborative research where we are now giving these drugs orally to the animal and we are waiting for the drug data whether in an in vivo situation which will mimic a human situation like if you take this drug whether they can kill because you are getting increased immune responses. So that will be that will result in a decreased MTB multiplication and it can be used as an adjunct therapy with the regularly used drug. So those drug will kill that bacteria and this will increase immune responses to kill the bacteria effectively. So this is uh, this work was supported by Tata Innovation Fellowship, and with this, uh, this is my group working uh, uh, with the different aspects of TB as well as uh, uh, how some of these MTB proteins we are also looking at. With we uh, who these proteins are actually manipulating the immune responses, like how they can be also used as a immunotherapeutic drug. So, uh, but uh, the, the, day, the work I am presenting is from Brahma and uh, Pfizer and uh, with this I thank you very much for your attention and any questions I can. It is very nice to see that what you started as trying to understand the basic mechanism has taken you to all the way to find drugs that can be really useful to treat. Thank you. Sangeeta will be happy to answer your questions. She's finished well ahead of time. Yeah. Okay, sorry? Vaccine, uh, we take, all Please. of us uh, as a mandatory, we take BCG, but that is, if, uh, that takes care of the childhood TB. But adult TB, BCG vaccine fails because BCG lacks many antigens which are present in MTB. So that could be one of, and those, uh, as I told you, you start six, for example those proteins are actually virulent protein. So since BCG does not have, BCG cannot give protection against uh, those antigens. Hi, uh, I was reading one article about uh, the same explanation that you have given for TB. It also works for cancer cure, uh, like you know, the DNA replication was stopped using the same kind of method. Um, so that's kind of interesting. So, uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Uh, no, no. That we we that's what I showed one data experimental also. They don't allow like it blocks the interaction of this PP18 protein with the toll receptor 11 to 15. So the the PP18 is not able to bind very successfully, and that results in like. PP18 activates IL-10, so once you put this drug, then IL-10 level goes down very uh, strongly, and that improves the antigen presentation as well as isogemal pH. So uh, all this together gives a, a good kind of protective responses. One is a painkiller. One is a painkiller. One is an anti-malarial drug. Uh, uh, so it can be repurposed. Like those drug can be repurposed for TB. I'm not saying it can be used solely. It can be used as an adjunct therapy to boost the immune response. In addition to that, or or we don't know. Maybe this drug is uh, uh, alone could is, might be enough to kill the pathogen. So we are trying both experiment. One is synergistic. One is uh, the drug alone. No, no, no. See, we are not targeting PP18 because again the drug resistant variety will come. We are targeting the TLR host receptor, not TB. Not TB. Thank you. Again, I'm feeling very proud to be here today and share the dais with all dignitaries and uh, uh, very, very uh, uh, like uh, prominent scientists. Thank you very much. Thank you, madam, for uh, nicely conducting the porcelain session. Now we are breaking for tea for 15 minutes. After that one, we, panel discussion will start.